Hi there! This is Gus Monsanto, lead singer for Human Fortress. There's a few questions I'd like to answer and a couple of stories I, I, I'd like to share. Well, I've been playing... Uh, I had a lot of international experience before I joined Human Fortress, actually. Um, I had like 10 years of international singing before joining the band. I was, uh, I first moved to the US back in 2001. I did a lot of stuff there. Then I came back to Brazil for a while and I joined Adagio, which was my first European band. And back in 2004, I spent four years with them. And that to me was a great learning ex experience. Because even if the guys were a bit younger than me, they had a lot, a lot more of expertise in terms of... Um, they were much more professional. They were more used to being on a professional environment than me in Brazil. Here, I, I had like a bunch... I knew and worked with a bunch of great musicians, but the, the demands for professionalism in... In, in Europe are like greater, you know? So I, I joined Human Fortress after having been the singer for Adagio for four years. Then I did two albums with Timo Tolki, which uh, put together a band called Revolution Renaissance after he left Stradivarius. And I was picked among 400 other singers. So it was a big privilege. Because this guy is like one of the father figures of power metal. So I had a bit of experience before I, I, I joined Human Fortress. So it wasn't... Uh, of course, I was, I was feeling Yori's shoes, but I was bringing my own shoes with me, you know. So it was great, man. You know, the, the, the biggest... And I'm I'm talking from the professionalism aspect. The guys, German guys, are super professional. Uh, everything is tight. We have like great. One of the greatest things I always say that in the interviews. One of my favorite things about working with Human Fortress was the opportunity of I was afforded to work with some amazing producers like Tommy Newton like Michael Borman, like Zeep Leverman from Warden Ogan. You know, these guys are like top-notch professionals. And we, I was very lucky and I learned a lot from each of them. And besides that, man, uh, talking about the, the human factor and the human aspects of it, these guys are just great people. You know, the, the, the biggest... I live in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. As, as a matter of fact, I'm here in my studio right now. And which I built during the pandemic. So it was... It, but, but the thing is... Uh, every time I, I, I mention the Human Fortress guys to anyone, what I always say is that these guys are so cool that... I knew that if we lived if we lived closer it would be the people I would eat barbecue on the weekend with you know or drink beer and stuff because they're great people great people very good friends and they make me feel so much at home man love the guys love the band Yes, there are differences. I already talked about it on the previous answer. But the thing is, I think that over the last few years, me, uh, a lot of Brazilian musicians have been moving overseas and having the opportunity to spread their wings and play with uh, other people outside the country and getting all kinds of 
great experiences. I, I'm, I'm not talking like, you know, this is not like the, the underdog syndrome or saying that uh, Brazilians are crap or anything like that. I'm just saying that normally, as it's a third world country, we're not afforded most of the opportunities that uh, people in Europe or the US or Canada, I don't know, they're afforded because... For instance, when you see, uh, we have a lot of talented people, Brazilians, uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of musicality here, uh, the, the percussive stuff, if you think about the Bossa Nova stuff, the, the harmonies, and I mean, Brazilian music is a source of inspiration to a lot of musicians who come overseas and here to I mean guys like you know like Will Calhoun the drummer in, from Living Color which is a great band and a fantastic drummer he spent a couple of years here in, in, in Brazil just studying the rhythms we have here but what I'm saying that the biggest difference is that here the guy takes a long time to 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 get closer to, to get close to a good instrument and while in this this other countries you have like musical education early on at school so it makes a lot of difference it's all about access i mean but i'm i'm glad that i i i've been afforded the opportunities of working abroad and i mean and Part of my thing is coming back here and sharing a bit of the knowledge and experience that I, I got. And I end up um, collaborating with other musicians here and, and trying to share a worldly, uh, a worldly point, point of view and perspective of how it works a little bit abroad and, and, and pass on the torch you know, of experience. Well, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Uh, I don't think, I think it's really upsetting that you, you spend a lot of time and energy and... Um, and to, to create... And at the end of the day, um, you, 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 make, you make pennies, you know. Sometimes I get uh, 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 a, a check from, from these guys, like $10 or $20 or something like that. And I'm like, wow, I cannot even go out for dinner <laughs> for, for that, that money. So... It sucks in a sense. I still think that something's going to happen about that because uh, I don't think streaming will go away, but they have to find a way to make more income get to the artists. Because when you think about it, if you compare, I mean, Paul McCartney, in my opinion, I mean, he's the greatest musician ever. And when you have a guy who creates uh, a high, a guy who creates a, a, a platform like Spotify, and in a, in few years this guy made more money than a guy like Paul McCartney made in his whole career, something's really wrong about that. But at the same time, I mean, you, you cannot, you cannot. Avoid having your product in in those shelves. I mean, if you don't exist in a in those in those streaming platforms, I, I I don't think for many people you don't exist. So even if you're not making money, it's important that you're there and that more people actually get to hear your music. But I mean, it's it's a double-edged sword man I, I i think it's important but i really hope that musicians can 
make a, a better living out of it you know to make to to get a, a, a bigger cut out of these songs because you see guys like Peter Frampton or Bon Jovi who have songs that have been who, who are streamed like millions and millions of times and if you see the the amount of money these guys make so I'm I'm not upset about my $20 checks <laughs> I hope to be with my brothers in Human Fortress real, real soon. We, we are working on a new album. I did the vocals here. Uh, I went to Germany to, uh, to work on, on the songs and pre-production. We had a great time. We did that back in the summer of 2022. And I hope that we have new product sometime in 2014 because we we did some killer songs for a different for a change. This time I recorded my vocals here. Check my this this beautiful no Neumann uh, microphone I got in Germany, just like Michael Borman's. It's a U87. So I tracked all my vocals here in the studio. Uh, this is the little, the smaller room, and the bigger room is out there. It's kind of a mess, but there's like a cool piano, drums, there's a bunch of stuff. So, it was a different, different process this time, but I'm really excited. I'm really sure that it's going to be a great sounding album, and that we're going to be together, and that we have some some good years of music making ahead all right guys love you bye bye